In this lesson, I'm going to do some more integrations for you using substitution. This is a continuation of the previous um, integration using u substitution that I did for you just the other day. So um, I see we've got a little bit of sun coming through here, causing some, Let's see if I can block that out. Okay, so here we go. First one says, what is the integral of x to the fourth over one minus x to the fifth dx? Now remember that what you're looking for is something that you can take the derivative of and get something similar to the other part. So in other words, if I look here, if I took the derivative of x to the fifth, I would have minus 5x to the fourth, which is kind of like this one in the top. So I'm going to let u be equal to u, uh, 1 minus 5. So I'm going to say let u equals 1 minus, not 5, 1 minus x to the fifth. Okay, let me get rolling here. My brain's a little slow this morning. So du dx is going to be minus 5x to the fourth dx. So I'm going to put the dx over here because du dx, so that gives me du, and I don't think I wrote that up for you before, but that might help you to understand why this is true. So the problem is that I don't have minus 5x to the fourth in the top here. I only have x to the fourth, so that means I need to divide both sides by minus 5. So that's going to give me minus 1 fifth, which is the same thing as dividing by 5 or minus 5, and that's going to give me x to the fourth dx. And now you can see that I'm all set to substitute because what I have here is what's in my numerator, and what I have here is what was in the denominator. So I'm going to plug that in back over here. I'm going to say I'm going to take minus one fifth of the integral. And remember that whatever this is, it's a constant. So the constant goes in front of the integral. So minus one fifth, the integral of u to the minus one. In other words, I just took this to the numerator because it would have been one over it. So u to the minus one du. So I've replaced x to the fourth dx with du. Okay, so now you can see this is pretty simple because u to the minus 1, and this is where you have to be pretty good with your integrations, right? So I know that u to the minus 1 is going to be the ln of u. The ln of u. So I have minus 1 fifth the ln of the absolute value of u, and I'm just going to substitute this in right away because I kind of didn't leave enough space. So the ln of 1 minus x to the fifth and plus c, and I'm all done. Okay, so the decide what you're going to use for your u value. Take the derivative of it. Adjust it if you need to in order for you to get what you had in the numerator here. Okay, let's do a few more. Oh, I guess I should have made more space. Oh, Ms. Havrot. Okay, in this one, obviously, 3x squared, the derivative of that would give me 6x, and I have 2x there. So that's a good one to choose. So it's usually the more complicated one, right? Let u be equal to 3. Uh-oh. Am I out of pencil? Did you see that? Just went right down. Okay, because it's a little piece. Do I have another one? Yes. Okay, so let u equal 3x squared minus 1. And I break it. So that means du is going to be equal to 6x. But lo and behold, I need to adjust it because this is 2x. I want this to say 2x, so I'm going to divide by 3. So that's going to be 1 third du is going to be equal to 2x. Oh, and I forgot the dx, didn't I? 6x dx, 2x dx. We'll put that in brackets. So you can see I have 2x dx here in the numerator and I have 3x squared minus 1. So that's going to be equal to the 1 third. So I put the third out front, the integral of 1 over u du. So now you take the integral. Remember that 1 over u, that's the same as u to the minus 1. And the integral of that, remember, the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. 
So this is going to be the lawn, one third the lawn of you plus C. And I'm going to write that all out this time. So that's going to be equal to one third the lawn of the absolute value of 3x squared minus 1 plus c. And there you go. Okay, so let's look at an e to the x question. So this time I have the integral of e to the 2x times e to the 2x plus 1 cubed. Now remember that the derivative of e to the 2x would be 2e to the 2x or the derivative of it would be 2e to the 2x, and that's going to be two times as much as I want here. So let's write out, we'll make this inside part be the u, let u equal e to the 2x plus 1. That plus 1 is not with the, the numerator, by the way. And so du is going to be 2e to the 2x dx. So again, like I said, I wanted e to the 2x. I have 2e to the 2x, so I divide both sides by 2. So a half du is going to be e to the 2x dx, which is what I want to substitute in for this. So that's going to be the integral of one half of the integral of, now I have u. Now don't forget that you had this exponent here. So it's going to be u cubed du. And now I'm going to take the integral of that. So I add one, that makes four. I divide by four is going to give me an eighth here. One eighth u to the fourth plus c. And finally, I'm going to plug back in the u. Don't forget to do that part. So I get one eighth e to the two x plus one all to the power 4 plus c. Okay, moving right along, we have a trigonometric integral here. I've got sine in here. Now remember that um, the, well, we'll get to the integral part, but let's look at here. So if I use this for my u, and I take the derivative of that, I'm going to get 18x squared and this is 90x squared. So obviously I'm going to have to do just a little adjustment at the end here. So I'm going to let u be equal to 2 plus 6x cubed. So du is going to be, that's gone, 3 times 6 is 18x squared dx. But I want 90x squared, and 90 just happens to be 5 times this. So if I multiply this side by 5, so I would get 5 du's is equal to 90x squared dx. And that's exactly what I want to replace this by. So that's going to be the integral of 5, that's my constant, sine of u, which is going to be, well, we'll just put u here for now because we haven't taken the integral. 5 sine, integral sine u du. Now what's the integral of sine u? The integral of sine is negative cos. So that's going to give me negative 5 cos u plus c. And we're going to bring that over here because there's a little bit more room up here. So that's going to be minus 5 cos. Plug in your u. 2 plus 6x cubed plus c. Ta-da! Look at all the space on this side. Hmm, might need that when I do the last question. Okay, so now something a little bit different. Always just a little different, right? And until you know all of them, then you're in trouble. So what's the integral of secant 1 minus z, tan 1 minus z, dz? So right away, you should think back into your derivatives, like something like, what was the derivative of secant x? And you might recall that it's secant x tan x. So this is just 
the derivative of secant of x. So if I let u be equal to 1 minus z, then I can have a substitution of, well, let's, let's do it. So let's say let u equal 1 minus z, then du is going to be equal to negative, this should have been let u equal 1 minus z, the derivative is negative dz, right? Because we this just goes to 1, so have negative 1 or just negative dz. But I want, oh, did I use dx's? I should have put this as z in my question. A little minor mistake here, always with the variables. Okay, so I've let this be equal to u and the derivative, I get du equals negative dz. So that means dz is equal to negative du. Okay, so if I'm using u substitution now, I have a negative sign here. So I'm going to say this is equal to the negative integral of secant u tan u du. And like I said, that's the, the derivative of secant x is this. So the integral going backwards, so the integral of secant u tan u is just going to be secant u. And I have that negative out front, so ne negative secant u plus c. And finally, don't forget to plug the u back in, so I get negative secant. You'd be surprised how many people forget to finish that off plus c. Don't forget your plus c. Okay, three more lovelies for you today. So what is the integral of 7y minus 2y cubed e to the power of y to the fourth minus 7y squared? Okay, now if you look at this exponent here, you can see that if I took the derivative, I would have something pretty similar to this, wouldn't I? So let's let u be equal to y to the fourth minus 7y squared. So now if I take the derivative, I'm going to get du equals, now this is, don't start taking the integrals when you should be doing derivatives and vice versa, right? It gets you a little bit mixed up. So I have minus 4y cubed minus 14y. Oh, well, look, that's only double this one. So don't forget your dy here. So if I want this to be double, then I'm going to say, okay, well, then this is going to be um, a half of this. So if I divide this by two, I would get a half du is going to be equal to 2y cubed minus 7y. Now, if I do that, I have a problem because this is 7y and minus 2. So if I just change this to a negative, that's going to make this negative and this one positive. And that will, this is the same thing, right? Minus 2y cubed plus 7y or 7y minus 2y cubed. So this is all good. Okay, so now I'm going to say, well, that's minus a half, the integral of... Now remember, this part here got replaced by du, a half du was this and this. So I have e, and this was where I made my u. So minus one half e to the u du. Now, the, the, the integral of e to the fourth is just going, or e to the u, is just going to be e to the u. Remember, because the derivative of e to the u is e to the u, and so I just get minus a half e to the u plus c, and finally I'm going to plug back in the u substitution here. So that's going to be, I'll just put over here, minus a half e to the y to the fourth minus 7y squared plus c. 
Okay, so we just have a couple more to do here. Um, yes, 10. Number seven, 10 sine 2x cos 2x. Ooh, this one looks really nasty, doesn't it? But it's not quite as nasty as you think because if you look at this in here, this part, we're gonna let this be the u. It's always in the, the most uncomfortable place under the radical sign here this time. So if you didn't know what to do and you saw all this mess, you might think right away, well, let's just try starting let u be equal to cos squared. Now, I'm going to rewrite this as cos 2x quantity squared, which is the very same thing, right? So if I let u be all of this here. Now remember when you take the derivative of trigonometric functions, you do the exponent, then you do the function, then you do the angle. So if I do du is going to be exponent, that's 2 cos 2x, reduce it by 1. The function, so cos of 2x goes to the negative sign of 2x, and the derivative of the angle is 2. So it's important that you're really good with your derivatives. So you may be saying, oh yeah, I remember all that kind of sort of but it's just practice. So I have 2, a minus, and a 2. That's going to give me a negative 4 cos 2x sine 2x dx. And once you've done that, you can say, oh yeah, look, it's the same thing, except I have this constant problem. This is 10. This is a minus 4. So how do I get this to be 10? What would you have to multiply by? So let's just write to you here again. So if you do minus 5 halves du, if I multiply this by 5 and divide by 2, right? Actually times minus 5 divided by 2, that would be minus 20. Minus times a minus is a positive 20 divided by 2 gives me the 10. So minus 5 halves du is going to give me 10. And it doesn't matter which order I write these in, but I'm going to write it the same way it was in the question. Oops, I don't need that. Cos 2x dx. So now I have this being easily replaced by minus 5 halves du. And again, I'm just going to put a little all of this, and this becomes my minus 5 halves du. So I'm going to write out minus 5 halves, and that's going to be the integral of, this has been replaced by u, so this is going to be u to the power of 1 half. 1 half, the square root is the half function du. And now for the fun part, I add 1 to a half gives me 3 halves. I divide by 3 halves. That's multiplying by 2 thirds. If I multiply this by 2 thirds, the 2s would cancel out. And I'm left out with minus 5 thirds. U to the 3 halves, because I added 1, and then plus C. And finally, all you have to do is plug it in. Mm, where will I put it? I'll put it up here and squeeze it in. So that's going to be equal to minus 5 thirds. U was all of this. So be careful with your bracket. So I'm going to have a big bracket. Then I'm going to write cos 2x minus 5 to the 3 halves plus c. So I'm plugging it right back in for this u. I put square bracket there. Okay, and it's looking like it's getting a little messy here. So I have a feeling I'm going to be flipping the page over for this. Okay, so here's the last one, and it, it looks like the most complicated one. And if you look, we have this plus sign in the middle. And because there's a plus here, this is called time for a breakup, right? You can break this into two separate integrals because there is this plus sign here. 
And that's, I mean, if you look at this, if I said, okay, well, if I let this be U, I would have 6Y plus 4. Uh, that would work with this, but it's not going to work with this one. So I'm going to break it into two parts. I'm going to have a U substitution and a V substitution. So first thing, I'm just going to rewrite this as the integral of 7. 3y plus 2 times 4y plus 3y squared cubed dy plus the integral of sine of 3 plus 8y dy. And that's going to make my life a lot easier. So if I let u, for this first part, I'm going to let u be equal to this. So I'll let u equals 4y plus 3y squared. And I'm going to let v be equal to 3 plus 8y. Okay, so du is going to be, take the derivative, I get 4 plus 6y dy. And the derivative of v, dv, is going to be 3 plus 8. Oh, sorry. The derivative of 3 is 3. It's 0. Let's have it Slow down. I'm trying to think ahead a bit here. So the derivative of 3 is 0. The derivative of 8y is 8 dy. Okay, so with this one, we're okay because we have the... Um, this derivative, I have 4 plus 6y, should be in brackets, dy, and I have 3 plus 2y, 3y plus 2, and that's going to be half of this one. So a half du is going to be equal to 3y plus 2 dy. Very nice. That gets rid of this one and this one. And this one, I have 8 dy, and I don't, I just have dv, so I want this to be 1 eighth of dv is going to be equal to dy. Okay, so now that we've got that all figured out, all we have to do is plug things back in here. So here I have a half for my half d, du, so I'm going to put a half out front, the integral of 7. Now u was 4y plus 3y squared, so that's going to be u to the power of 3, right here, and the dy was covered with, with that one, All right? So now I have du, whoops, breaking the pencil all the time here. And for this part of it, I've let v be 3 plus 8y, so I have plus 1 eighth, because that's my dv here, um, 1 eighth, and I have sine, the integral of sine of U, oh, v, right? But sine v dv. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm going to find some more paper here because I'm just it's getting a little just a little too cramped even for me. Okay, so here I am. I feel much better with a bigger piece of paper. So now I'm going to take the integral. So u to the third is going to be power 4 divided by 4 is 7 over 4 times a half is 7 eighths. So I have 7 eighths u to the fourth. So that fix that one. Now don't worry about the plus c. We'll just add one constant at the end. It's the same thing, right? You're not going to have 2 times a constant. You're just going to have c. And the integral of sine, sine is, the derivative of sine is negative cos, derivative of cos is negative sine. So I have a little problem because I need a negative sign here. Don't get too fast with your plus signs. Okay, so I'm going to have minus 1 eighth cos v plus c. And now the hard work has been done. All we have to do is plug in the u's and the v's. So that's going to be 7 eighths. My u is 4y plus 3y squared, all to the power of 4, minus 1 eighth 
cos of v, which is 3 plus 8y, and plus e. And there you go. Okay, so those are those are a few little little trickier ones. Maybe sometimes you just forget the derivatives, especially those complicated ones like secant x and secant x tan x. You have to be careful with your negative and positives, like cos goes to negative sine, sine goes to negative, sine goes to cos. And so when you're when you're doing the integral, be really careful. Now you could go back here and just take the derivative of all of this to see if you get the original equation, which I know you will. But uh, yeah, so that's the story for today. I hope that helped you out. The next one, I'll do some definite integrals. Definitely. Bye for now.